Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata 2014 in Santa Clara. I'm here with Kashik Das. Kashik, That's how are you right. doing? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And you're with Pivotal? Yes, I'm with Pivotal. Okay. I'm and you, uh, you, a data scientist. Senior data Pivotal. scientist with yes, Pivotal. Right, and right. you gave a talk today on some sort of machine data stuff That's as well? That's true. The title of my talk was Creating the Digital Brain. Okay, excellent. Because, you know, one of the themes I've been hearing here is a lot of people talking about machine data and managing and controlling right. and monitoring all this machine data and actually uh, making real-time uses out of that data. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about yeah, that? No, absolutely. That's something I'm really passionate about because what I'm seeing is that we have the whole infrastructure for getting value out of big data by building models, advancing very well, and we have made a lot of progress in the last couple of years. And on the other hand, we have these really smart machines which have more and more intelligence packed into them, but the machines are still separate, you know. There is no brain that will bring it together. Ah. So I really think that we are at the verge of seeing this the emergence of really smart machines. And the, uh, the one thing, I, example I like to talk about is that Gulf of Mexico disaster where an oil platform blew up. If that oil platform was smart, it would have known something was going wrong. It would have shut down the systems and it would have alerted the control room that something was wrong. And that just takes out the room for human error and m just increases productivity. It's a good thing all around. You know, interesting you would bring up that case study. I was just with a company uh, two days ago that talked about using drones in pipelines oh, to discover right. those things way ahead of the possibility of them happening. Right. So yeah. I think there are there are efforts in the machine world yes, to actually absolutely. bring that sort of uh, capability and technology right. to a yeah. different world. Yeah. yeah, and then there is a company, a startup around here who are building submersible robots which, you know, if there is an industrial disaster, an oil spill, they can just send them and, you know, without endangering human Humans. divers and collect all the data of what's going on. Uh, but we really have to put those together using data science and big data architecture. So how do we put that together and how does Pivotal, what, what, what would Pivotal's play be in this? Like, how do you bring all this data from machines and people and knowledge that we have in domains how does the data scientist or person manage all that and make the smart brain? That's, that's really the interesting question. So the, what we uh, have seen and the way we are approaching this is that we are creating a digital brain to make the system smart. And that is based on a data lake. So that's where you know the whole Pivotal One concept comes in. That's what we have launched recently. And it's based on a Hadoop layer so it's based on open standards. But the idea is that you keep your data in parallel and you keep it in place and you push the computations onto your data. So we are, so it's basically a conjunction of a data lake with data science applied to it. And when we talk about the data lake, it needs to be able to ingest data, real-time data, micro batch or batch data, put it all into this Hadoop layer, and then we should be able to attach lots of other components to it, and they could even be made by third parties, they could be made in-house by different companies. And then once we build the model that extracts the patterns from the sensor data, yeah. and once we have that model ready, we can then in real time see if those patterns are being breached, because those are anomalies, and once we detect the anomalies, we can then trigger the right action by connecting with the control system. So are the patterns uh, uh, a result of machine learning or are they exactly. domain knowledge from people that know so, the patterns or? So, so data science in um, our view uh, is a combination of domain knowledge as well as machine learning. So we uh, like to call it, we have developed you know, uh, a very specific methodology for data science and we like to call it the eightfold path. So there are four phases and there are four other things to keep in mind when you do those four phases. So the four phases are a problem formulation in, a, in a, the mathematical problem which all the stakeholders agree is the right problem. Secondly, you need to, uh, the data step where you build the features from your data. The third is building the model, which in many ways it's trivial because you know now we have the knowledge and the libraries like Madly which will enable us to do that. And then finally applying it. So in that, uh, of the four phases, the first two phases, the data scientists work very closely with domain experts. 
with subject matter experts because the features that we create in order to go and build the model, those features need to incorporate domain knowledge and uh, cannot be done blindly. So is this an agile approach to data scientists? Yes, exactly. Or is it, does everyone have their own version of an agile data science uh, track or well you know, you know? It's, I can't speak to everyone but it's true that you know since there has been so much activity in this area there are a few recipes out there but the way we make this agile because you know we work very closely with another part of pivotal the pivotal labs who are the gurus of agile development uh, and we realize that that methodology cannot be applied just the way it is to data science. So we have to modify that. And in these four phases, what we do is that we have a big deliverable after every phase, which we present to all the stakeholders, get their feedback and iterate if necessary. So that's how we're bringing the agility into the data science process. And in terms of the technology, we have been able to put in a lot of usability so that iterating over big data is not a problem. And you know, now it sounds almost trivial to say this, but even a couple of years ago, it would be amazing that uh, building a logistic regression model over a few billion rows would take you hours in SaaS. It takes seconds and minutes now on the Pivotal platform. And that really changes the way you do the whole process. So you mentioned over time, if, if we had this conversation, and, and maybe I'll say when we have this conversation in New York in six to eight months from now, what will have changed in this market, in this industry, and where you at Pivotal are and going? So, you know, if I could answer that question, you know, <laughs> I could make a you lot of money. You could go to Las Vegas too. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the way, but we think about that a lot, you know, at Pivotal. And that is why, uh, and the real answer is, of course, we don't know, which is a great thing, you know, because there are so many startups, so many companies putting in their resources, independent scientists creating things. So that's why we think in terms of platform and not specific products. And we are building the Pivotal One um, on open standards for that reason, yeah. to make it future-proof, so that no matter what new things come in, we would be able to play with them. They would be able to interact with the data and the models that we have already built so far. Okay, so let me ask you this one. People adopting data science and data science tools and calling themselves a data scientist, if I have an Excel spreadsheet, am I a data scientist? But you know, who in an organization is not, is lagging behind in getting the whole data science and data as a, as a platform? So, you know, actually, I feel everyone has the potential to benefit a lot from data science. And it is great that people want to be data scientists. And there are certain basic things a data scientist needs to know, like the knowledge of the math and being able to master the tools which deal with big data. And any tool is fine, really. Uh, but in terms of, the, of a typical organization, uh, what uh, we are seeing is that uh, the marketing people are the most advanced in okay. terms of using the data. Interesting. Everybody else, every other, other role, from product management to finance to senior management can benefit a lot from, like from getting data on board. science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So last question for you is, if there was one problem in this world you could solve with data by applying data to it, what would that problem be that you would tackle? So uh, uh, that's a very difficult question to answer, you know, because there is the so list. many things yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah. I want to do. But I really want to, um, uh, nowadays, you know, I'm thinking a lot in terms of the smart systems. And I feel that making systems smart, uh, which are essentially public utilities, yep. like power, water, so that they can manage disasters better and uh, they kind of can prevent misuse and take it to um, uh, take the benefits to the people more is very important and I think it is important both in the developed world and in the developing world where a lot of people are still not being, uh, are not part of these systems. That to me sounds a little bit like resource allocation and management and yeah, Absolutely, I love that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great talking to you.